Last week, I posted a video containing lots of information about certain changes, fixes and updates coming to Battlefield 5 after the open beta. Those things were based on community feedback, data from the beta, or they were simply showcasing things that weren't present in the beta at all. And all of this came from a Twitter takeover of the DICE account by Drunksy. He's a core gameplay designer over at DICE Stockholm. Now that Twitter takeover is continuing into the foreseeable future, with lots more developers lined up to share insight into the development process of Battlefield 5. And next into the hot seat is Valerian. He is the lead multiplayer designer for Battlefield 5. Now he's released a lot of cool information over the last few days, and we're going to dive into that stuff right now. Starting off then, first of all, Valerian gave us a snapshot at the deploy screen for one of the two French maps. This is Arras. This will be the smaller of the two French maps, with Twisted Steel, the one with the massive bridge on it, being larger, but it seems both will support infantry, ground vehicle and aerial gameplay. We're looking at this shot here from the German Army HQ in Conquest mode, where you can see the option to jump into two tanks and two planes. So there's definitely vehicle presence here, but I suspect it won't be as heavy as maps like Twisted Steel or Hamada, and I'll talk about Hamada later on in the video. You can also see three transport options there, so there's clearly going to be a fair amount of space between objectives if that many transport options are on offer from the HQ. One thing that we can take from this image is that four of the six flags here are placed in slightly more built up areas, and two of the flags, F and C, they appear to be much more open. This is likely going to split the vehicle and infantry combat slightly, with F and C being dominated more by vehicles, and infantry probably controlling the rest of the map here. That said, there is quite a bit of open space between the A and D flags, and the D and F flags, so there's definitely some opportunity for some proper combined arms gameplay, and of course the town in the middle is fully supported with roads right through it, so vehicles can get into the infantry areas, but it seems there might be dedicated vehicles vehicle areas of the map as well. Now, without having played this map myself, it is impossible to say how it truly plays, with 64 players all running around and blowing stuff up and shooting each other, but to me, at this early stage, the playable area here, at least in Conquest, does look a little bit restrictive. The white lines running vertically around A and D flags and C and F flags show that these external flags are flanked by the boundary of the play area quite closely and more so on the A and D side of the map. On first viewing, I'd have to say that I'd like to see the map area open up just a little bit more, perhaps extending into the fields behind a little bit, and it is worth noting at this point that this map is a work in progress. This layout is not final, and it won't be final until you play it for the first time on November 20th when the games come out, so it could be that things change up a little bit more here. And just to go on a little bit, this is the Conquest play area. That's no longer the largest game mode on offer in Battlefield games. We of course have Grand Operations and the Breakthrough game mode. That likely is going to use a lot more of the space that you see here around the outside of the town. And interestingly, Valerian confirmed that on this map, Arras will play host to the third day of a Grand Operation, tied in with Twisted Steel as the map played on the first two days. These maps will make up the French Grand Operation, basically. The third day of the operation is currently set to Frontlines as the game mode, played with 64 players instead of the standard 32. 32 is supported separately from Grand Operations, and DICE is testing planes in Frontline 64 player as well. Just testing for now, nothing is confirmed, but it is something they are considering. Now, Valerian did go on to say that because of planes behaving differently in Battlefield 5, needing to hit up resupply skyhooks and those being quite far away from the line currently being fought for, their impact may not be as strong as you might think it would be, but it is still in testing at the moment, so it might not even make it to the final product. 
Next up, we've got some awesome details about fortifications on the Rotterdam map. Things are changing up a little bit. I'm sure you've all experienced the fortress that you could build underneath the A objective and probably spent a good amount of time around the D flag as well, putting up sandbags and barbed wire to stop the enemy getting in at you. Well, Valerian, with the help of a couple of other developers, released some information about just how popular certain fortification positions were with this heat map. As I think we all expected, the A and D flags were extremely popular locations to build fortifications, but you can see some outlying locations as well. Down the narrow alleyway between the B and A flag, where you could build a few small walls to block out line of sight, that was quite popular. Out on the road between the D and B flags, you can see some yellow dots there. Probably people were building to provide more cover for more players, moving across a very open space. And you can see within the C courtyard and the road north of that, there was some significant activity up there. And presumably, that's because that area offered a direct route between the two HQs, so there would have been a lot of traffic up there anyway. However, this heat map is just the teaser because Valerian released another screenshot of the B flag this time, the White House, and as you can see here, it's been fully updated with more destruction physics and fortification positions as well. This building did already have some destructive elements before, but now you can see the exterior walls on the ground floor can be blown out and replaced with sandbags, and upstairs as well has a few new fortification positions for players to build if and when the walls are destroyed. Now personally, the B flag and the D flag were probably my favourite two points on the Rotterdam map during the beta, and a lot of crossover fighting would occur. A lot of action outside on the open pavement area too, so it's great to see the B flag now has as much fortification potential as the D flag, and at the same time it becomes more dynamic in the process. Seeing just how much the lower levels of the A capture point could change during a round, it will be interesting to see how much the B flag now changes when we see it again in November. Next, a quick little bit of information here. We have a fix for the reflex site from the open beta. A lot of people complained that the site itself was extremely murky and dark, leading to a lot of people losing sight of their targets when they were looking down the sights of their weapon, especially in busy backgrounds. I myself ended up dropping the site in favour of the aperture site, and honestly, I preferred the entire look and feel of that site instead. But as you can see here, DICE has cleaned up the site somewhat, and overall it is now much improved. The reticule, however, has lost a bit of clarity in the cleanup process, and you'll notice there is still some dark tinting to the site in general, and according to Drunksy, who ended up joining this conversation, the reason that remains active is to give the reflex site a small visibility downside in order to keep the iron sights, another option, relevant for you to use. Next up, Valerian gave us a look at a brand new vehicle coming to Battlefield 5. This is the T-17 Armoured Car, or known as the Hound, and it's an American produced vehicle, and even though it's an armoured car, you can see that it's got a cannon on the front of it. Now, it was due to see action in the late war period with the US Army, but neither the T-17 or the T-17E1 ended up seeing any frontline service with the US. The T-17E1s, however, were supplied applied to the British forces during the war, and then the British renamed them to the Staghound. This obviously wasn't a vehicle that you could pick in the open beta, but I expect we're going to be seeing this on plenty of the launch maps in Battlefield 5. And just yesterday, Valerian gave us a look at Hamada. Now, I think Valerian might have been responding to some concerns in the community at the moment that the map sizes overall for Battlefield 5 were quite small, even though we didn't have any information about map sizes apart from on Rotterdam and Narvik. And so to combat that, he released this image here of the largest map in the game. Obviously, this doesn't look like a desert, there's lots of different colours all over it, but the overlaid image and the arrow there shows you where the soldier was standing when this map was shown in the This Is Battlefield 5 trailer. 
The complete map overview, that's showing off the breakthrough game mode with five sectors in total. And get this, the distance between the attacker's HQ in front of the first sector and the fifth final sector is over 1,500 meters, which is absolutely huge for a 64 player multiplayer battlefield map. It's big by any multiplayer standard. The distance from the soldier to the G flag, which is behind the soldier that they shoot, is about 500 meters. So that gives you a sense of scale in Conquest. The layout that you can see here of Breakthrough is work in progress, but if you remember where the soldier from the trailer was standing, you really get a sense of the scale of this map overall. And of course, Breakthrough is going to use most of this map's playable area. Rotterdam was an extremely small map in comparison to this one, and Narvik was probably what I'd consider a medium-sized map. Hamada is set to be one of those huge, all-out warfare maps. It's going to support aerial, ground vehicle and infantry combat. We saw that in the trailer, but the focus is going to be on vehicle warfare. You might have spotted a runway in the top far right corner. Looks as if DICE heard our feedback about having proper takeoffs and landings back in Battlefield games. You can't deny that taking off in jets in Battlefield 3 on Caspian border was really, really awesome. Looks like we're finally seeing the return of that in Battlefield 5. However, I can't see an attacking team runway anywhere, which might mean the attackers sort of simply spawn in the air away from the battle. As I've said, this is all work in progress, so I guess things could change, but I think it would be fairly obvious where another runway might go. But again, we don't really have any idea of the geography of the map, so it might be that a runway doesn't work for the attackers and they might simply spawn in the air instead. Now, again, just like with Drunksy's takeover of the Twitter account, that was a lot of information in just a few tweets. The Dice Dev takeover is going to continue for the foreseeable future. Sven Grunberg, who is the head of studio communications over at Dice, he's been tweeting out a couple of different developers saying they are on the list for the takeover. So I hope moving into this week that we get to see more and more info coming out about Battlefield 5. Considering the account is headed and run by DICE, not by EA, it's clear that we're getting a far deeper amount of detail and information than we would otherwise be getting from the official Battlefield channels, and I for one am extremely happy that that is the case. I love seeing this kind of detail. This is what I care about, and I think this is what a lot of you guys out there care about, so you kind of know what you're getting when you actually buy this game, if indeed you do buy this game. And with that, I think I'm about done here. Thank you very much for watching today. If you want to follow the DICE account on Twitter, I've linked it down in the description for you. That way you can keep up with all of this information yourself. But don't worry if you don't use Twitter or you can't keep up, I will post more videos in the future as more developers take over and we get more information out of the studio. And of course, if you want to share your opinions on anything I've mentioned today, please do so down in the comments section. Just make sure you keep things civil. Now, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well with notifications switched on. Click that little bell next to subscribe to check. That way you won't miss any of my future videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.